A reading from the New Testament, Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues of fire appeared to them and rested on each of them, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language, Parthians and Medes, and Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in their own tongues the mighty works of God, and all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others, mocking, said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words, for these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children, and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning. I am so pleased to be here worshiping with you this morning. If you read my bio in the bulletin, you're probably convinced that I'm certifiable and, and you wouldn't be far off. I'm related to Terry. <laughs> or you're convinced I received my undergrad, both masters and my doctorate from an internet paper mill. I assure you, this is not the case. Um, although my academic and theological pedigree is much more Wesleyan than what you're probably used to, I come today as a fellow Christian, a disciple of Jesus, ready to worship with you. Today is Pentecost Sunday, which is quite a celebration for the church. You all look amazing in your red. And that church comes with a capital C a celebration for the church. It is the birthday of the church, or the anniversary of the event of Pentecost. Birthdays and anniversaries are very important occasions, aren't they? He has an anniversary tomorrow. They mark a blessed event, a happy occasion, a celebration of another year of life lived together in the case of an anniversary or a church. You might have read in my bio that I collect last names. You need to know I've collected four. We'll get back to that in a minute. Pentecost, the celebration of Pentecost, is 50 days from Passover. So technically, it was just yesterday, right? It was yesterday. Uh, it was a couple of days ago. You know, when you count the calendar and you count the little squares, one, two, three, four. It was technically yesterday, but we always put it on a Sunday so that we can celebrate with our family, our church family. But can you believe that Easter was actually seven weeks ago? I don't have my Easter decorations down. I, I'm, I'm just behind the times. Pentecost, which means 50 days, 
is actually the second of three required feasts in the Jewish faith. There are a total of seven major feasts, uh, but there are three that are required. And uh, there are three first fruits feasts. Now we could spend months just studying the feasts of the Jewish faith, but in a nutshell, the first um, fruits feast is Passover. The first fruit of barley. Barley is harvested, harvested first in that part of the world. The second first fruits is the Feast of Weeks, which is Pentecost. If Passover is Easter, Pentecost is the Feast of Weeks. And then there is the Feast of Tabernacles, which is the first fruits of olives and grapes. And if you align them with what we do now or, or how we view church history and church celebrations, Passover was the old covenant, the old promise of salvation, the old remembrance of how things were. The Feast of Weeks, Pentecost, is the new covenant. The death, the resurrection, the ascension, and the coming of the Holy Spirit. That story is complete now. It's done. The church has begun. The church is off and running. The new covenant is finalized here, which leaves us with a really open door for what is that third feast going to be in the future? What is it going to look like? the Feast of Tabernacles. I want us to notice some things quickly about the reading in order to set the stage a little bit. First, the writer of Acts is careful to give us an accurate depiction of the supernatural event. He's trying to give it words to something that he can't explain. Can you imagine John Knox trying to describe a spaceship? Or Ben Franklin trying to operate my smartphone? The writer of Acts is trying to explain this supernatural event using words. He's not making it up. He's, he's, he's struggling. I do that a lot when I'm trying to find words. Second, the people were gathered in one place. They weren't running around forming committees. They weren't holding evangelical meetings yet. This one hits close to home. They weren't having a potluck <laughs> or a work day. There are times and places for those things, but here, on Pentecost, they were in one place, praying and worshiping together. Third, I want you to notice that Paul comments on the predetermined plan of God. This is not random. They are not drunk. I mean, there's humor in the Bible. If you, if you know where to look for it, there's a lot of humor. They're accusing these devout Jews of being drunk, and it's not even the third hour. And a devout Jew can have no food or drink of any kind until morning prayers are said. And it's not time for morning prayers yet. So to accuse a devout Jew of being drunk is a little funny. God didn't throw this together at the last moment. He's been working on a plan the entire time since creation. Do I have any Harry Potter fans? Okay. It's important when you read the Harry Potter series to know that Harry frees Dobie in book two. That's a very important plot part when you get to book seven. It's an important, it's, 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 a, it's a capstone or a pivotal point in that literature all the way from book two to book seven. Well, J.K. Rawlings has nothing on God. He's been planning this since the beginning, since Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. And this is the result. This is Pentecost. 
Everything else has been the first act of God's masterful plan, and Pentecost raises the curtain on the second act. What is the purpose of the Holy Spirit? Why is this important? Why are we here today? It's hard for us because we have always had the Holy Spirit. We've had a lifetime of seeing the Holy Spirit work in our lives and see his presence, but these people never had. For us old timers, we know what a 33 is or a 45. When you play music, you put it on a little thing that goes around and around and you drop the needle on and it plays. Our kids don't have a clue what that is. Our grandkids think music comes from Alexa. We've always had water in our homes. There might be one or two here that remember the old pump in the kitchen, but I never remember a time where I didn't just turn the spigot and water came out. This is how it is with the Holy Spirit. We always have had the Holy Spirit. For these people, it was a dramatic and exciting moment because it was something new and different and the culmination of God's plan. But even us who have always had the Holy Spirit have to use metaphors and visual aids as representations for the Holy Spirit because we can't see it. It's like wind. We cannot see it. The purpose of the Holy Spirit is to be an interpreter, a tour guide, a protocol officer. I think about how many protocol lessons Meghan Markle has gone through in the last six months so that she would nod at all the appropriate times and curtsy correctly and, and not mess up at all with six billion people watching her yesterday. The Old Testament Jews were so far removed from God, they had no access except through a priest and a complex series of sacrifices. And suddenly, with the advent of the Holy Spirit, they have direct access. We have direct access. We don't have to go through any intermediary to get to God. That's what's so exciting about Pentecost. God cannot be present where there is sin, and Adam and Eve brought sin into the world. And so through God's very complex plan, as it played out throughout the Old Testament, the birth of Christ, his growth, his ministry, his death, his resurrection, and his ascension, all those parts came and serve a purpose so that the Holy Spirit can come and we can have direct access. Why do we celebrate today? Because this is big stuff. This is huge stuff for the church. This is the day we should be doing the musical pageants and the week leading up to it. This is the opening of the second act told you it was important that I had four last names. Why do I celebrate September 2nd? I celebrate September 2nd because that is my physical day of birth that I came into the world and I became Robin White. Raised by two loving parents, taught me to read, fixed the car when I wrecked it a hundred times, nursed me through the measles, the chicken pox. Why do I celebrate May 19th? Because on May 19th, I changed my name to Burns. And I became a wife and a mother of three annoying young adults. I married the love of my life on May 19th, and I lost the love of my life on May 19th. But I still carry the name of Burns, because my children are Burns, because I was a Burns for 26 years. I celebrate March 12th. 
because I thought the first time was so great, the second time would be spectacular, but he didn't hang around very long. He walked out in front of a moving car, and that was that, and I became a widow again. But I still recognize March 12th because I added Marco to my monogram. And why do I celebrate July 23rd? I actually have it on my calendar, July 23rd, birthday. Why do I celebrate July 23rd? I celebrate July 23rd because on July 23rd, I wrote a letter that completed my circle, that caused a whole bunch of upheaval in a whole lot of people's lives. And I became a friend's added another initial. Now when I write them, I write them in chronological order now. The F superseded the W, uh, but like everything in my life, it doesn't have, nothing in my life happens in a normal way. But I became a friends and I added three brothers and their wonderful wives, nieces, nephews, a litany of families, an aunt, oh my gosh, an aunt that sang like a lark. I celebrate these four days every year because they are the dates that make me who I am and what I am. And each one represents a part of my life. Moments to celebrate. They represent beginnings and even in their endings they represent beginnings something to celebrate, a reason to have cake. Come on, I have to have, re you know, cake is important. A reason to set aside that moment, even if all I do is say, today was the day, because it's worth noting. Why do we celebrate Pentecost Sunday? It's more than a big deal. It's a huge deal. It's bigger than Easter. It's bigger than Christmas. Think about how much preparation you put into Easter or Christmas. I have seven boxes in my attic of Christmas decorations. I have one box of Easter decorations. I have zero Pentecost decorations. I need to fix that. Because Pentecost is the biggest deal. It is the birth of the capital C church. It is the advent of the Holy Spirit that makes this possible. It is the start of God's second act. Can you imagine what comes in the third act? I'm hanging on and waiting hard. Meanwhile, today, we're going to celebrate the birthday of the church. Would you stand with me as we respond through song?